Um, it's my pleasure to share our study on ICT use in the Philippines. Let me first acknowledge my co-author in this paper, Mr. Carlos Caballero, for his excellent uh, research assistance. Uh, next slide, please. So in this presentation, the objectives are to provide a general landscape of ICT use, of course, with emphasis on uh, assessing opportunities for platform work. We present findings um, on internet usage, ICT usage, um, namely cell phone, computer, um, and the usage characteristics. Also, the characteristics of individuals engaged in online work, um, which is, um, by the way, limited to online selling, which is our key variable for online work that is available from the NICTHS. So while Dr. Condi presented the results uh, of a, a survey specific on platform work or platform workers, ours is about the general landscape of ICT use um, in the country using the NICTHS. Uh, in the end, we uh, we will provide or we will discuss our insights uh, for advancing opportunities for both men and women in platform work and in improving ICT use um, in general. Next slide, please. So as I've mentioned, um, this study was mainly an analysis of the NICTHS conducted by the TICT um, in collaboration with the PSRTI. It was done in 2019 uh, and it marked the first household survey done on ICT use, um, and it was administered to a nationally representative sample of households and individuals in the country. For our analysis, we applied mainly descriptive analysis, although we also did some correlational analysis um, to look into the characteristics of individuals engaged in online entrepreneurship. Next slide, please. Next, please. So we go to the general landscape of ICT use. Um, among all individuals in the country aged 10 and above, the survey found that nearly 80% or 79% use a cell phone um, within the past three months. And among those who use cellular phones, 94% reported they only have one unit while the rest have more than one. And computer usage is at 34%. Um, while internet usage is at 47 percent. So these data show that um, it, it's wrong to assume that all cell phone users are able to access the internet. So only less than half of the population of 10 and above have access to the internet in the past um, three months or or who access the internet in the past three months because that's the reference um, period. Next slide please. This is not from the NICTHS, but I'd like uh, to show um, uh, that we are lagging behind most of our ASEAN neighbors in internet usage. Um, in fact, um, those who are behind us are only Cambodia, Myanmar, and Laos, and the rest, um, Brunei, Malaysia, um, even Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam are all ahead of us. And I do not have such graphs for computer and cell phone usage, but this figure should already um, be useful in gauging our efforts vis-a-vis um, -vis other neighboring countries in the ASEAN uh, since we are, we are working on or we are focusing on online work and online platforms. Next slide, please. In terms of how women um, fare vis-a-vis uh, -vis men, we found that women are at par with men in many aspects um, of ICT use. So the percentage of cell phone users is slightly higher for women at 81% compared to men's 77%. And based on proportions, there are no significant disparities between men and women in computer and, uh, in computer and internet use. And based only on this, we are in fact uh, at par with or even on top of, of some developed countries when it comes to narrowing the gender um, digital divide. Um, women are also at par with men when it comes to percentage of those conducting online transactions, those using the internet for communication, and those who are using the internet for online learning. And um, notably, there are more women um, who are doing online purchasing than men. So it's 24% for women, 18% for men. And um, though these are not shown in this, in this graph, there are slightly more women who are more aware of online business transactions than men. So 51% of, of women and 47% uh, of men. 
and a higher proportion of, of women internet users, um, 11% have online buying and selling accounts in comparison to men, um, they have 9%. However, um, male online sellers earned more income in 2019 than female online sellers. Um, such comparison, however, requires a more in-depth study as we do not know the, the number of hours that they spend on online selling and we do not, uh, we did not control for for other characteristics. We will learn more about this, um, about online selling and uh, uh, entrepreneurship in the succeeding slides. Next slide, please. So in terms of details of internet usage, the device commonly used for accessing the internet is the cellular phone. 85% of internet users use their cell phones. Uh, meanwhile, 30% of, of internet users use desktop uh, computer, only 19 use their laptop, while um, very few, 7% use tablets uh, to access the internet. Next slide, please. Majority of internet users access the internet through mobile data while in mobility. And nearly 4 in 10 or 40% said that they use um, internet at home. Over a quarter reported they use it when they are in public places like malls, internet cafes, restaurants, while only 14% are reported that they do access the internet when they're at work. So the, the above mentioned data show that while it's important to, to facilitate the speedy improvement in, in internet coverage um, at home, for instance, for fiber connection, um, DSL maybe, it's crucial that uh, we upgrade the system, um, expand the number of cell sites, um, transmission lines, and other relate, related infra to improve mobile connections um, for accessing internet. Next slide, please. On frequency of use, um, majority of internet users access the internet on a daily basis. Some 38% reported that they do it less frequently, um, and about a quarter reported that they use the internet only when, when necessary. Next slide, please. In terms of purposes, 94% um, of users reported that they use it for social activities or for communication purposes. And interestingly, 44% noted that they use it to access information. And more than one third use it for leisure or lifestyle activities such as um, downloading music, online gaming, and, and streaming. And in this particular activity, um, there are more men, 44% uh, than, than women, 31%. And only 12% reported that they use the internet for learning, which is narrowly defined um, as engaging in online courses, academic research, accessing ebook and dictionaries. Meanwhile, only 14% said that they use it to access government websites uh, or services, which means that there is much to, to be done in, in e-government in the country. It's quite unfortunate that only 6% uh, use the internet for their professional lives, such as um, doing job search, um, business activities, activities online or professional networking. And um, only 6 to 7% use the internet for online transactions like banking, booking, reservations. And another small percentage used um, the internet for, for navigation uh, and for transformation, transportation. Sorry. And a very tiny uh, proportion of less than 2% use it for, for creativity um, or for user generated content. Uh, but please remember uh, that this is pre COVID, um, the, the survey was done in, in 2019. Next slide, please. Okay, so in relation to the low level of online transactions, majority of individuals interviewed are not aware that they can do financial transactions online. So 52% of, uh, of, of the respondents and the awareness level among women is slightly higher at 51% compared to, to men, 47%. And only about 10% um, have online bank accounts, while um, only 6% have electronic and mobile money account. Also, only 7% um, of individual respondents have online selling or buying accounts. And this proportion is comparable um, between men and women. Next slide, please. We also examined the, the reasons for not using the internet and the dominant reason is related to lack of knowledge on how to use the internet and what internet is about. And other important reasons are 
high cost of internet subscription, high cost of equipment. Uh, in, in this particular reasons, we found a significant uh, gender disparity. Um, a non-negligible proportion, 21%, also reported that internet service is not available in their area, which, which tells us that uh, there's really um, a lot of, of things that needs to be done in terms of infrastructure. And um, some reported that they do not need the internet uh, so, that, so that they're not using the internet or they're concerned um, also with private, privacy and uh, security. Um, next slide, please. Now we move to the use of online platforms. Okay. The, the activity that is most commonly done by, in, uh, by, by internet users uh, when it comes to online platforms is the purchase of, of goods or services, where 26% of internet users reported to have engaged in online purchasing in the past 12 months. And this percentage is a bit um, higher among women, 29% um, than men, 22%. Very small proportions use online platforms for paying bills, online banking, online delivery of services, and online selling of goods uh, or services. And the prevalence of online investment or on online investing, such as stock trading and other um, such activities, do not even reach 1% um, of internet users. I think here it's only like 0.4%. Next slide, please. We examined details uh, of online purchasing and the most commonly used device for online purchases is the cellular phone with 80% reporting that they used their cell phones for making um, purchases online. On the average, online purchasers um, bought two times each month within the last 12 months and that there is no uh, there is no significant um, gender variation in this aspect. On a monthly basis, an online buyer had spent approximately 2,300 pesos on the average, and men spent more on the average at around 3,200 pesos compared to women's average purchase amount of 1,800. And most online buyers get uh, the merchandise via delivery or courier um, only very few or 17% reported that they do meetups um, to get their purchases. Now we move on to um, online entrepreneurship, um, which is limited to, to just online selling. Um, so the question in the survey is that in the last 12 months, have you performed any of the following online activities through website, social media, mobile application? And one of the options there is selling of goods or, or services online. And the survey estimated around 980,000 online sellers um, for 2019. And of these, 68% are women. Among the, these uh, online sellers, an estimated 26% uh, reported that this activity is their primary source of income. For the rest, or three-fourths of them, um, this is only a supplementary uh, rather than a primary source of income, and that is uh, true for both men and women. And um, one of the characteristics of online entrepreneurs is that they, they have skills with regards to ICT um, compared to, to those who are not uh, into this, um, compared to the general population. Next slide, please. So with regard to online women sellers, uh, we want to, to know more about them. Majority of them are college educated. Um, some 23% have had high school education um, at most. And a larger proportion of these women online sellers are categorized as homemakers or housewives. And another significant proportion, 31%, are own account workers or self-employed. Um, interestingly, 11% uh, of them uh, are considered unemployed in the, the labor force. And even the employed ones, 8% of, of employed uh, workers or employed women or online sellers uh, engage in, in online selling. So um, not only the the, the, um, the homemakers, but also the unemployed and the employed. Okay, so to, to get to know more about um, the characteristics of online entrepreneurs, we did a correlational analysis and we found that when factors are, are held constant, um, engagement in online selling is more likely for women, married individuals, and more educated persons and holders of ICT degrees are also more likely to, to enter online selling. 
And the likelihood of entering uh, online selling increases with age, though decreases at a certain threshold. And individuals that live in rural areas are, are less likely to engage in, in online selling. And when we compare um, labor force status, it was found that compared to, to employed workers, the unemployed, the self-employed, and students are more likely to sell online. Uh, interestingly, um, if you control um, other factors, homemakers are less likely to engage in online selling than uh, employed uh, workers or employed uh, individuals. So these are the characteristics of, of online sellers. Next slide, please. We now move to the nature of their activities. So the top products that are sold online are, are clothing, uh, footwear, sporting goods. Number two is cosmetics and fragrances. And number three is food, um, groceries. And number four is consumer electronics and accessories. Next slide, please. A significant proportion of, um, of online sellers utilize social media sites for selling their, their products online. And a greater percentage of women um, use social media platforms, like 80% of women, uh, but only 57% of, of male um, online sellers use social media. Some 11% use e-commerce websites like Lazada and Shopee, um, and a very minimal percentage use their own websites for selling their products. Next slide, please. And the dominant mode of payment is um, cash on delivery with 72% of online sellers reporting to me to have used such a uh, mode. And this is followed by making over the counter payments in remittance centers and convenience stores. And only a very small percentage use electronic or mobile wallet um, or even debit and credit cards. Next slide, please. The average income earned from online selling um, in 2019 is at 7,700 uh, pesos per month. And earnings are markedly higher among male online sellers at 10,000 or nearly 11,000 compared to female sellers who made um, only 6,000 per month. And uh, a large proportion of, of online sellers earned 10,000 um, pesos or below each month on the average. And women in particular, 74% um, of them um, earn up to 10,000 um, pesos each month only. Next slide, please. So we also found that those who sell through their own websites have higher monthly earnings, perhaps because they, they, may, be, they may sell um, high price items. And those with their own websites are likely to be established once already, since having a website indicates their ability to invest on the, on the platform and marketing of, of their products. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, there are also important findings that, uh, from the paper that, and these are, um, there seems to be high confidence in using online platforms for selling stuff. The survey did not find lack of trust. It's a big issue. Um, the, per, the proportion of those who had trust concerns is a very low 4%. And um, the survey did not uh, find uh, uh, any significant uh, disparity between men and women in this in this response in their response. Uh, instead of the trust issue, the more common reasons for not um, purchasing online are lack of interest or uh, preference to shop in person and lack of knowledge or skill uh, for online selling. And this lack of knowledge is relatively more common among older individuals um, than younger individuals. Next slide, please. We also found that online selling is recommended by majority of online sellers, um, or 73%, and majority of women sellers um, say it's a good income uh, source, like 81% of them, while a majority of male sellers say it offers uh, fast transactions. Next, please. For our recommendations, next slide, please. Um, the survey found that ICT offers a lot of opportunities that many Filipinos are confident in in using it in their in their business transactions, and are and are hopeful and positive in the benefits that they can that they can gain, gain through it. However, the low awareness and lack of knowledge uh, of many in using the internet prevent them from maximizing the gains from it. So efforts must focus on improving awareness, knowledge, and skills for using ICT. And I'd like to echo uh, what Connie, uh, Dr. Connie, um, mentioned a while ago, that there is a strong incentive to, to pursue 
policies for skilling the workforce and ICTUs in particular and enhancing educational uh, capacity in general. Um, also remember that although, uh, for instance, women are comparable with men when it comes to the proportion of individuals having access to ICT, the problem is that the usage rate is way too low. ICT as a way to improve people's opportunities still very much in its infancy, so to speak, because not many people are using it to advance their livelihoods, their opportunities, um, their very low levels of online transactions uh, out there. Of course, this is pre-COVID, -pre and um, we will know later how this pans out during um, during or post-COVID. Hopefully, we will we will see um, the end of the tunnel soon. Uh, but in terms of focus, older people and those who have low education attainment must be targeted in efforts for skill or reskilling. Next slide, please. Um, I did not um, discuss infrastructure because um, there are lots of, of PIDS studies on, and, uh, on the the NICTHS that, that work on this, but I'd just like to, to echo uh, that uh, many Filipinos still face a lot of infrastructural constraints in relation to their access to ICT. Therefore, gaps in, in infrastructure must be addressed. Improving mobile internet connections are crucial to further enable greater ICT usage for both men and women, and efforts must be made to streamline access to formal institutions and its processes such as banking and government transactions in an online setting. And lastly, uh, next slide please. One of the policy issues uh, as mentioned by Dr. Connie a while ago is um, social protection. So the issue here is that online entrepreneurs also need uh, social protection, but because many of them are informal, they may not be motivated to, to enroll for such. And one of the ways in which social protection access can be broadened among users um, of online uh, platforms is through government's engagement or partnership with online platforms, especially social media platforms uh, where most online enterprising are being conducted. And these platforms, they can be incentivized to, to promote access to social insurance, become a channel for educating users on the importance of social protection and for participation. I think that ends my presentation and thank you for, for your kind attention.